It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He's deeply dedicated to pluralism as well. Dr. Manuel Pastor is the author and distinguished professor at the University of Southern California. He directs the USC Equity Research Institute and holds the chair in civil society and social change. His research focuses on economic, environmental, and social conditions in low-income urban communities. And as many marginalized communities are faced with economic uncertainty, voter disenfranchisement, discrimination, his research on the true condition of American pluralism and the study of social conditions that are facing most marginalized communities is an instructive roadmap in the realization of true equity and representation. Please help me welcome Dr. Manuel Pastor. Thank you, I wanna start by saying that Los Angeles is my favorite city in the world. <laughs> and I actually mean it, Mehdi Hassan, so. Uh, I also like to let audiences know when I start speaking that if my voice sounds a little harsh, it's not because I've been mad, screaming, had self-appointed experts in the Middle East on TV recently. Many of you have. It's that I actually have a voice condition uh, that makes your voice uh, a bit harsh. I always like to let people know it's true. It's treated once a month with Botox because that's how we treat everything in Los Angeles. So. <laughs> I love LA. So, I was originally asked to speak in what seemed to be a simpler time, before the Hamas attacks of October 7th, before the Israeli invasion of Gaza, before the heated exchanges that have ripped across our campuses and our politics. I was supposed to offer an after-dinner talk on the broad crises affecting our times, the threats to multiracial democracy, the sharp increase in income inequality, the climate disasters racking our planet. And what I would have said is that behind each of these crises is a deeper challenge of disconnection. Democracy is threatened because some are so frightened by the changing you of America including the growth of Muslim and MENA Americans, that they seek to have rights abridged, voices shut down, votes uncounted. Income inequality persists because too many see the unhoused and the poor as less than human. And the planet is at risk precisely because we've become so detached from both nature and future generations that we allow the climate crisis to simmer. So that's the keynote you're missing. And in its place, I was oft asked to offer a few words about the current moment. So not a full keynote, but what we in Spanish call a keynotito. <laughs> and yet it seems as though this theme of disconnection and what we do to address it is so deeply relevant today. For so much of what we are witnessing, as hospitals in Gaza City are in crisis, as Palestinian families are forced from their homes, as hope for a just and lasting peace slips away, is the product of an inability to imagine the humanness of the other. When asked to comment on what has taken place in recent weeks, I've always started with the unimaginable pain that is being suffered. I cannot fully grasp the grief of a Gazan parent whose child has been killed by a building shattered by Israeli bombardment, by a moment when home becomes hell. 
And I also know I cannot fully grasp the grief of an Israeli parent whose child life, child's life was taken while she was attending a dance party, a place of joy turned into a killing field. I do know that we will not work our way through this, either abroad or domestically, unless we fully understand the deeply felt losses, unless we recognize the asymmetries of power and position that feed the desperation of Palestinians about their future, unless we find our way to honest debate and dialogue. For we know that when a Rashida Talib is censored for speaking her mind, we lose a little bit of our democracy. We know that when Islamophobia and anti-Semitism course through our universities and our societies, we move further from solutions. And we know that we cannot, uh, when we cannot agree to stop the violence and rush humani humanitarian aid, we slip into a sort of callous chaos. The first time I showed up for an annual MPAC gathering, this isn't the first. The first was in the wake of 9-11, when Islamophobia was being fueled by a toxic combination of fear and racism. And I learned then that being an ally doesn't mean we're always on the same page. It does mean that believing the isolation or marginalization of Muslim and MENA voices is no way to build what we truly need, a lasting movement for immigrants, people of color, working people, and justice in this country. Building that movement will require clarity and complexity, courage and compassion. And most of all, it will require community and connection. And that's the speech, the keynote I always meant to give. Thank you.